I still use my 13 years old PC in my workshop. I gave it to my nephew at some point, but eventually, even for him, it turned out to be too old to be used for gaming. Of course, I've upgraded with the GTX 750 Ti and an SSD, but this is still a build around a socket 775 and an old core quad Q6600. Even for me, as the time goes by, it became less and less reliable, even just for watching video with stuttering and tearing, and sometimes even worse. Yeah, I suspect the CPU took some heat at some point. I wanted to give it a last CPU upgrade, if possible the best for the socket 775. So I've tried to look for a Core 2 Extreme QX9770 or a Core 2 Quad Q9650. But for those prices, I could nearly buy a second gen i7 with a motherboard and some DDR3. But while checking for the CPU, it appeared that the Xeon 5400 series, and in particular the X5470, has a similar performance than the QX9770. However, the Xeon 5400 series is an LGA 771 socket, and I'm looking for an LGA 775 upgrade. After checking the price, it's a much better value. Fortunately, there's already a popular mod to adapt the Xeon CPU on a consumer grade motherboard. Here are the two CPUs side by side, the Q6600 on the left and the X5470 on the right. You can see that they are physically pretty close to each other, but there are some subtle differences. First, if obviously the number of contacts, 771 and 775. Fortunately, the four missing contacts are not necessary. There is however two contacts which need to be swapped. It seems a big deal, but there are actually really easy solution for that. The other issue is the orientation of the CPU. If you look at the notch, you can see that they are rotated uh, by 90 degrees between each platform. This is in fact the only thing which prevents physically to put a CPU in the wrong socket. To swap the contacts, you can find those uh, adapters. They are on a flex PCB and stickers on each side. The thickness will add a little stress on the socket, but that's okay. For the notches, which I choose to trim, I 3D printed a jig and this should help me to remove exactly what I want. Uh, I put the Q6600 to find the correct orientation and then I placed the X5470 inside the jig. Now I know exactly where I need to trim. You can also cut the notches tabs uh, directly on the socket, but I choose uh, rather to work on the CPU. If I miss my shot, at least I will still have a working computer. But first, we need to update the BIOS of the motherboard and add the uh, microcode for the CPU uh, to be recognized. You need a program called MMTool the microcode of the CPU you want to add, and of course, an original BIOS uh, of the motherboard. Everything is available on Delighted website, links are in the description. It's pretty easy, you just launch MMTool and load your uh, original BIOS. You can see there's a lot of parameters, but honestly, we don't care. Uh, what we want is this um, tab, CPU patch, you click on it, and we have uh, the uh, list of the CPU supported by the BIOS. We just need to add the new ones. Uh, you click on rows and then you select uh, the macro code you want to add. You can either add all of them, but I know uh, the Xeon I want to add is a 45 uh, nanometer. So again, you can add all the uh, 45 nanometers, but I know the CPU ID of my X5470, uh, which is A0E, uh, so I just add this one. You can find the CPU ID of the CPU you want to add by a quick Google search. Click on apply, and then you can check that the new CPU ID is added uh, on the uh, end of the list. Now save your BIOS in a new file and um, I suggest to use a short name uh, because the old BIOS software have trouble to display a long name. Uh, save it in a USB drive or a floppy disk and uh, then launch your flash BIOS utility. Simply load the patched BIOS and uh, let the flash software do its job. After flashing, 
power off your computer and make a clear CMOS uh, to have a clean, fresh start um, when you put the new CPU. Now we can get physical with the CPU. With the jig, I can uh, trim frankly without uh, being afraid of going too far. In fact, it turned out that my jig was not deep enough. Don't be afraid when you see the copper exposed, this is mostly ground uh, signal exposed. So it turned out pretty clean, uh, but as I say, I need some few uh, adjustments of the depth, uh, which I did off camera. Then you just place the stickers. There's also a small triangle on the sticker which helps to find the correct side. Now we can place the CPU on the socket, and as I said, um, I was really a, a hair short for the dimension, so the insertion was a bit scary. Or site is fine, I don't know. Anyway, um, now I can close the lid and put back uh, the uh, cooler. I use an old uh, Thermorite Ultra um, 120 Extreme, which is ready to, dis to dissipate 120 watts, which should be just fine for the TDP of the Nuxian. I used to let it passive for the Q6600, but uh, with the Xeon I choose to drop a new 120mm fan. And now the moment of truth. Oh, I got a beep, it's a good sign. Yes, X5470, the CPU is detected just fine. Now I will just uh, configure the BIOS properly and run some quick benches. So all the benches were run with the same uh, system, 8MB of uh, DDR2, 750 Ti for the GPU and uh, the same Windows 7 uh, X64 and same SSD. Cinebench on 20, bumped to a 516 to 813. It's still under a decent Core i5 score, but it's a non-negligible uh, non gain. Kernel Strike Global Offensive on the FPS benchmark map went from an average of 53 frames per second to uh, nearly the double, 170 frames per second, probably because uh, we uh, went from uh, a clock speed from a 2.4 GHz to a 3.34 GHz. 3 Mark 2011 uh, only show a really slight bump, maybe because we are uh, bottlenecked by the GPU. Um, the major changes are on the physics score, uh, going from 3427 to a 4173 score, and uh, logically have an impact on the combine and the total score. If you check on the detail, you can see like um, we've got a gain on the physics test and on a uh, game 3 test. Of course, the combined score uh, reflect that. So, here it is. Uh, I'm currently capturing it with uh, OBS. It was a pretty easy and a cheap upgrade, but only because I happen to have a compatible motherboard. If you are afraid of uh, trimming your CPU or cut your uh, socket, you could find already modded CPU on eBay. But you would still have to update the microcode, and if your BIOS is not compatible with the uh, MM tool, you will have to do it in a command line. Uh, if you look at the performance, you can see like OBS is taking a third or 40% of the CPU. It's true, I'm using a CPU encoding for a quality of size compression, but even so, don't expect incredible performance. So at the end, uh, should I recommend to buy one? It really depends. If you, like me, uh, also have a compatible motherboard, well, yes, it's a cheap upgrade and uh, it's worth it. But if you don't have one, don't invest in two and seven seventy five motherboard, RAM and Xeon. It will be also interesting to check with a DDR3 motherboard to see if you have better performance and also with better GPU but for what I'm doing on the workshop it should be just fine. So anyway, uh, I hope you like it, thanks for watching and see you soon.